Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome back to the Divine Skrek Republic, giving the best possible life to as many people as possible. In today's video, I have done a lot of thinking, I've decided we're going to go down a very silly route, a route where I don't even know if this is a viable way to win the game if the end game events happen, but I just think it fits the lore so well. We are going to be going completely habitat mad. Now before, we were already focusing quite a lot on building these habitats because it seems like it's the best way to give the best life to as many people as possible. And that's the entire point of the Skrek Republic. It's all about happiness for as many people as possible. Well, we can't afford this many habitats, or at least we can't build them quickly. So from now on, the habitats will no longer be focusing on science. They will still have all of the unity buildings because I need as much unity as possible because now I need to get these three so that I can finally get the galactic wonders because I've decided that is what we're going for for ascension. Once again with the whole as many people happy as possible thing because I want the, the ring world, the Dyson Sphere and actually all four of them with the century array being less important than the other three for this type of style. But from now on... The habitats will be focusing on minerals and energy, and that's it. No more science. And that is terrible, and I am fully aware it is, but it will speed up how many habitats we can build until each and every system is completely filled with them. And this does have one major benefit. The starbase capacity is affected by your overall population. That's why we have so many at the moment. And I don't know if that ever caps off. If it doesn't, we can have a ridiculous naval capacity. We will have a serious peacekeeping force. So that is the idea. That's what we're going with. And so let's just begin. Now, are any of our workers currently making... Nope, no one is currently making a habitat. So we're just going to, ha going to have to wait for a while until we can actually do that. Okay, so relative power, thank you very much. I would like to start trading some energy for some minerals, just because we have so many. In fact, will either of the fallen empires trade with me? That would be a lovely question. Hello there. Would you by any chance give me minerals? Complete. Okay, good. You're not fully against doing that, which means we can just do an instant transfer. Oh, well, it would help if you actually cared about energy, so never mind then. Where are the traders? Let's just have a nice passive trade for a while. Now, once we have our new star bases, though, we will be getting more money and energy. Currently, our naval capacity has been reached, which means we're kind of just sinking money into our navy. Uh, where do I want to put the next anchorage? Let's say down here. Let's fully fortify this whole area with our anchorages. They're not the strongest things, but at least it will protect us a little bit. Just keep on upgrading everything we can, and soon enough, we can start making some serious money with the habitats. Complete. A lovely trade, research agreements and minerals. What's not to love? Now, the way we're going to win this game, then, is actually via just the habitats. If we make enough of them, we will eventually win victory via either domination or federation. Purely because of how percentages work. Now, the really rubbish thing is these three are actually kind of useless for us. We are never going to have a vassal. But I need all three of these to have Galactic Wonders, and I really, really want the Ringworld, Dyson Sphere, and Science Nexus. Even though they do cost a fortune. So fine. It really does suck because it means right now we can't use any of these, which are just so, so powerful, including bonus minerals and such, which is just lovely. Just have to keep on using all of these. Oh, production targets are not being reached, and we need some more influence. I mean, we are getting plus six already. That's quite a lot of influence. Now, wow, we have so many different species currently living with us. Now, you guys... Our lovely Calvins, I want to change your template a little bit. Because I would love you to be industrious as well. So create template and apply that to everyone. Situation log updated. That will also make you all psychic, including ones which weren't psychic a second ago, which is fantastic. 
This way, you give us loads of bonus minerals, and we can use you on the habitat, since you have that bonus breeding speed, because you are Calvin, and that's what Calvins do, apparently. Apparently, I was building habitat, I just wasn't paying any attention, which is the usual way of me doing these things, honestly. Uh, which one of you has the Calvins? There you are. Now, I think I will have to redo the species modification thing if I do this, which is a little bit annoying, so instead, I might just send you. Yeah, you will give us bonus minerals, so go ahead. You can now found our new habitat. The faithful have now claimed a new world. Which world would that be exactly? That'd be this world. Hello, new world. How are you doing? Okay, this world will still be science because it is inhabited of our main science species, so it makes complete sense to do that. Uh, no. Let's first of all put down Unity. As much as I do want this to be science, Unity comes first. So let's put down the Gene Clinic, and uh, this one's probably the weakest, honestly. Let's put down Temple, and then let's put down the Visitor Center. Okay. Lovely. And before I forget, I would like this to be a Gaia world, because why not? We have enough energy to do so. All of our worlds will be Gaia worlds and pure paradise. In space, we now inhabit it with these lovely habitats. Even the empty void of space is beautiful. And all of these worlds are currently becoming Gaia. We are definitely the good guys right now, by the way. Already, we have increased our maximum starbase capacity by yet another one. Now, I would like more trading hubs, but I think I've yet already got every single area I'm inhabiting already has a starbase and a trade hub. So, I guess now just continue to place these down here. Now, if anything does invade this area, we'll lose all of our anchorages, which is a problem. But at that stage, we're also probably going to lose our fleets anyway. So, at least we're fortifying the bottom section, then fortify over here as well. And then we're mostly well protected. Incoming transmission. Hello. Oh, lovely. Hello, Mandate of Money Marble. Wait. When did you go back to being... E when did you go back to being egalitarians? When did I miss... How did I miss that? That's such a big deal. Uh, there's the Cash Cactus Combine. Screw you, sir. But, yeah, also, you're getting up and up in terms of power level. Well done. See? Egalitarian is more power th than yours, Xenophobe. Is more powerful than yours. Well, I am not speaking well today, but the important thing is, yep, you are definitely egalitarian. You're exactly like us. Huh. That's amazing. We are now at war with this empire over here, and I'm really hoping we're going to win via settle status quo and not achieve war goals. Now, of course, we are at war because all the other Federation members voted to go to war, and if I said no, they would have just voted over and over again, and eventually they would really, really hate me. Now, the reason is, for the settle status quo victory being so favourable, is because it splits the other empire into two, with the new empire having none of the opinion factors which the old empire have. Because because right now, the only reason why these lovely fellows can't join us before they became xenophobic again, but even before that, is purely because some of our other members really don't like them. They like them enough for the association status, but not for the federation status. And that's really annoying. If we split them into two, the new empire would count as a fresh empire, there'd be no modifications to their opinion, and they would have instantly joined us. So, I'm only going to get involved, involved, if we start losing. So for now, we'll just rest. And we have a brand new world. Once more into the shroud, so much power. Increased lifespans, increased evasion, increased units. Oh. Risking it. Curse bestowed, fantastic. Army morale minus 20%. Well, I'm sorry for trying. A new habitat is finally being built. Ooh, yes please with that. 
of actually saying that right now I'm actually trying to do all of the really cheap sciences because once again we have faith in science which gives us three months worth of unity every time we unlock any research. So spamming the smaller researches will get us through this horrible section of having to do the domination traits as fast as possible. Because they are just useless and we have so many better things we could spend our unity on. The new habitat is now constructed and is fully colonized. So now all we're doing is building all of the unity buildings first, which is literally all of the unity buildings I can build here, and then lots and lots of mining. I just realized our science species, which of course was the species we actually found underground and then liberated for our own empire, is still decadent. Yeah, decadent and quarrelsome. They are two really, really bad traits, but I don't think... No, I can get rid of them. Okay, never mind then. I'm tempted to just get rid of both of those, but I could instead swap decadent for communal. It even makes sense. It's sort of social programming there. You're no longer decadent, and you are instead communal with your fellows. Or I could make you natural physicists instead. Keep you quarrelsome, but improve your science output. And since you are on almost all of our science planets, and we are focusing on society research above all else... Yep, maybe it's your understanding of our society that's finally freed you of your decadent ways. Yeah, I'll just leave you called that, and yep, create template, a much better template, and let's apply that to all of you. Situation log updated. And there we are. So here is why slowing down our science so much by making so many habitats and having none of them related to science is going to hurt in the long run. Although we are going to have more minerals and more energy and more star bases and more naval capacity, which means we will have swarms more ships in the long run, they're going to be a lot worse because each habitat we add increases the cost of our science and these repeatable sciences are amazing. For instance, this one, just plus 5% energy weapon damage every single time we research this and we can keep on researching it the spirits have granted us new and it's done. going to be slower to research as we build more of the habitats and that's the problem i really should get this already because i think you can equip this to battleships which would be cool Ooh, building cost minus that'd be cool as well um might still go with the cheaper option for now yeah i really want to get through this unity problem Apparently we are winning the war, but it doesn't look like it. Three of your systems are currently belonging to the enemy, and... That's about it. That's all that's happened. Saying that, though, it looks like the enemy's forces have been driven back, and you do have the superior fleet power. I will continue to monitor this. One more habitat now at our command. And once again, we are going to go with any mineral producer. Although I am tempted this time instead just to use one of the Calvins. Especially now we have made them industrious. Uh, yeah, go on then. And we are about to have enough to make our next habitat as well. I didn't accidentally make you natural physicists by mistake. That must be some kind of error on your part. Well, it's still good, but it's not what I intended. I see you blinking. Okay, from now on, if I make any more science areas, they're going to be physics labs. That's actually totally what I wanted. I wanted more physics. I mean, to be fair, I do need more physics. Maybe it's a sign that I should start diversifying my um, science a bit more. Fine, from now on, we will have physics. Now, you're still quarrelsome, aren't you? Yeah, so you really shouldn't be on any of the Unity buildings. Like, really, anyone but you. Ooh, especially you guys. Apparently, you guys are very good with Unity. That's good to know. Maybe it was good in the long run. Maybe. Our star base capacity once again increases, and I'm currently building a brand new habitat. Now, we won't see the increase in minerals for quite some time, complete. because building on habitats takes ages. 
So for now, it's going to just cost us more and more, but in the long run, we're we going to be rich. To a new world. And that wealth will be redistributed to our people because everyone has the best possible um, living standard already, so that's all we're doing. We're basically providing jobs for everyone in an actual nice way for once. Uh, we do need the Citadel eventually. I would love the battleship to be cheaper, but once again, I am going with the cheapest option. Oh, but that's actually useful. Okay, the second cheapest option, which is actually useful. Whoa, oh, no, we are not going to do that, because that can lead to some serious problems later on. Uh, let's go with the Plasma Thrower. All of the cheap options are being discovered here. And with Telepathy, we get... The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Almost all expensive options. Well, I'll just get the Tomb World Adaption. Not that I really need this, because we have the Skrek, and the Skrek can live in Tomb Worlds anyway. At last, there we go, and the Galactic Wonders. Which means now we can build all sorts of absolute insanity. For instance, we should be able to build the Dyson Sphere, which will give us a lot of power in the future. Cannot build due to existing orbital station and cannot build with habitable planets. Well, I guess it makes sense. We are going to drain all of the energy from the sun. Well, not drain it, but we are going to harvest it to use it up so it's not hitting the planets, basically. Ring worlds also can't be done in habitable planet systems. Science Nexus can't be built around a star, but can it be built here? Yes, it can. Just need more money. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. That's a question. Should I focus on habitats still, or should I actually begin one of these? Because the first level doesn't really give us a bonus. So I think for now, still habitats, but the our end game has now moved to that. Finally, the Research Institute. Thank you. Plus 5% research and just a nice bit of research bonus. Complete. All is well with that. There we go. That's easier. All the planets doing okay? Yeah, they're doing fine. Why aren't you at 100% happiness? The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Oh, I didn't actually know terraforming causes unhappiness. Well, that actually makes complete sense, to be honest. The faithful have claimed a new world. Of course, now, in the end, we will have a huge bonus to resources on all of our Gaia worlds. And let's face it, I'm sure every one of our populations wants to live on a Gaia world. Well, there's a war going on over here, but I'm about to do this mission finally. The Great Infinity Machine. Okay, so what I want to do is grab you, who is a max level, and I want you to go ahead and research this project for us. I can't remember the bonus it gives in, in the light game, but I think the bonus it gives for doing the mission changes based on your tech level and based on the level of the scientist. Might be wrong there, so don't hold me to that, though. The war has very slightly shifted in the favour of the Federation. We now control several of their systems, and we've pushed them back out of our systems, but we're not winning as much as I want to. But I can't allow a complete victory, because that's going to cause all sorts of issues, because several of our members really don't like these guys. Now, of course, they would like us in time, but that's going to take forever. But I do feel like I might need to intervene a little bit. Just a bit of damage to their fleet could be enough. Saying that, their fleets are quite weak, actually. Looks like both sides have lost a lot in this war. Okay, for the sake of not losing any more lives... Wait. Are you two at war? Oh, well, on a side note, those two are at war as well. Two of our friends are at war. Okay, well, yeah, okay, let's just begin. You, I must have said okay about a million times there. Make a move. Ah, oh, but this costs a fortune as well, sending them out, the mineral cost. I'll leave it for a while longer. The metallic orb has been opened up. Our hacking team has been able to use the outgoing signal as a gateway into one of the auxiliary CPUs of the sphere. We are receiving some data from it and can tell it's been scanning the black hole Gargantua for a very long time. It is old. Very old. This constant calculator now lies within our grasp of understanding. If we push harder, we might be able to find out what it's doing here and who built it. 
What marvels might it contain? Contact or declare it a divine instrument for bonus happiness. Most of our population already has 100%, so let's go with contact. Hello, hello. Nice to meet you. Hello there. So... Let's go with, can we assist you in your research? Now, I have read, read this before in the previous playthrough, so if you'd like to read it, please feel free to pause. Sure, we'll allocate Situation resources to you. Updated. Understanding Infinity. Yep, needs a level 5 or higher, and that's exactly what we have. Any other cheap upgrades we can grab? Oh, very cheap. Lovely. Still want more Unity, so we can start off using all those lovely Unity bonuses again. Also, I say lovely far too much at the moment. All of these, the Ambitions, they're called. And I really want... Well, that one for a start. Mega Structure Build Speed Increase. That would be lovely. But this one. Plus 33% Mineral. That's just so needed. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Let's go with that one. Okay, so we now have the Research Institute able to be made. And of course, we are going to build this on Redemption Rock because at the end of the day, that is still our capital. You replace with the Research... Ooh, Psycorps. I didn't even know that was a thing. The Psycorps is your friend. Trust the Psycorps. Well, it has loads of bonus unity, so I will definitely be placing that. Uh, we do need the food, though, right now. Actually, we need pretty much everything you have. That's kind of annoying. We only have two mineral producers here. So, this is actually really weak. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's replace you, then, with the Psycorps. And replace this energy with the Visitor Center. Because it just makes sense to be there, honestly. Once more into the shroud. That is not worth it, I'm afraid. I don't really care about army morale, so I'm not going to take the risk for any negatives. Oh, I want the science nexus site, but habitat first. Incoming transmission. Sure, do I have more than one of the gas then? Of course. Don't actually know what the crystals do, but thank you. Ah, that's pretty the nice. Spirits have granted us new wisdom. Droids, we're never going to use you, but once again, that's just for the bonus unity, which finally I can use. Uh, yep, cheap stuff first. And let's grab ourselves that. That is lovely. Huge increase there to our mineral production. And of course, it is slowly increasing as well because of the habitats. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Anything of interest? Resource Replicator. 50 energy for 40 minerals. Um, yeah, honestly, I do want that, and it is cheapish. Sure. One month left. Come on. Come on. The spirits Thank have you. Granted us new wisdom. Okay, all expensive, so I'll just go with the core systems. Oh, yeah, how's, how is our scientist doing? Wow, that's going to take forever to finish. Oh, hello. Sleepers awake. Okay, before we do that, who is this? Oh, no, it's going to be you, but no, it's you. So, I don't know if this is the end game crisis, but these lovely archivists are no longer going to be lovely. They have awoken. They are going to now expand. I don't know if we can deal with them. I don't know how aggressive they're going to be. I've never seen this in full force. This happened at the very end of the last season. Spoiler, I guess. But, uh, okay, spoiler territory here. But the thing is, at that point, we'd already basically killed them. They had almost nothing left, and even though they get a bonus fleet after this event happens, it was still too weak. The Cash Cacti were all about warfare, and they could easily replenish. It was just an obvious victory for us, and that was the end of the season. Wow. So I looked it up, and no, this is not an end game crisis, it's just a thing. It began as a subtle shift in the behaviour. Scattered reports of their ships, once rarely seen outside their own space, now being spotted in remote systems all across the galaxy. Highly advanced scouting vessels visiting ancient ruined worlds, refusing all hails and fleeing when attacked. Their purpose and mission unknown. 
until now. We now know that the Fallen Empire were preparing, recovering the data banks of surveying beacons and automated scouting posts left behind when they retreated to their present borders, gathering information for their return to the galactic stage. In their space, fleets are gathering, armies are being mustered, and ancient factories roar to life. For the first time in an age, the... Okay, let's just say it. The Pirak? Pirak? Yes, let's say Pirak. The Pirak directors are looking outwards beyond their borders and towards the galaxy at large. As their decaying shipyards are repaired and refitted, and the dormant systems of Titan foundries come online, the rest of the galaxy is left with only one question. Who will this once sleeping giant target first in their quest to regain, to reclaim age old glory lost, says the dyslexic Latherix. Giants in a playground. Well. Well, 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 you are arrogant, apparently. Skrek, are you here to submit to our regulations? Well, no. Request to become satellite. We can ask to become their satellite. If they accept, they will be unable to attack us, but we will have to contribute 25% of our monthly research to their own. No. If you try that, half of the galaxy goes to war with you. Okay, yeah, we really need to help out. They are just outright losing at this point, which is really annoying. Main fleet, take action. Today, we are going to take out all of their... Satellite, or oh, satellite, darn it, all of their um, stations, that's me thinking about them. And then hopefully that will give us the advantage we need. Our team is just not very aggressive, that's a problem. Seriously, we have enough fleet power to win this, without me getting involved, but apparently not. Really? So straight away, these guys gave up their independence. Well done! I really wish it was me who declared this war. Because if I did, I could just take over a few planets and then declare status quo. But because we have these fellows who are currently doing the whole warfare thing, what I have to do is get it so we have some planets, but we can't achieve war goals, and then make sure we, we run out of war exhaustion. It may be easier just to win. That's a really weird position to be in. For the very first time, we're going to be having two habitats being built at the exact same time. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Okay, which one's the cheapest? That would be you. We have finished the Infinity Machine. We cannot bear to see you spend more of your limited time helping us. You have done your part. You are very helpful. Maybe the heat death of the universe won't happen before we finish now. The task remains, and we shall finish it. Now your reward. Do you wish to learn one of our secrets, or do you wish to solve your own problems? There is nothing it you can teach us. And we get plus 5% research speed. I'm okay with that. That's a nice little passive bonus. Another habitat, blah blah blah, you get the drill by now. Oh no, one of our scientists have died. Hmm. None of you are particularly good. I guess you're the best. Wow! Okay, Cash Cacti! Now that is weird to see. One of our leaders being a Cash Cacti. The Holy Legions have arrived. Prepare to be purged. Your ways are not compatible with this universe. You will see the light the in time. Have granted us new wisdom. Hey, look at those Gaia worlds all at once. Fantastic. Lovely. And of course, that means we get a 10% bonus on each of these worlds. Flat cannons and... Ooh, that's dangerous. And honestly, there's too many things going on right now. Uh, later. I still want to do the Elgate stuff, but later. The light purges. In fact, go here first. Let's take out one of the largest. That whoa, that is really a large station. 
Once again, two habitats being built at once. And our mineral count is really increasing now, finally. And this is whilst our fleet isn't even docked. Bit of a size difference with the fleets. Yeah. Lasers. Just... Oh, that was so blindingly orange. Uh, could you please retake that? I'll take one second just to grab it. And then let's make a move for the last large base. 5% energy credits. That would be lovely. Yeah, let's do that. It'll take forever, but I think it'll be worth it. Okay, what do I want next then? Will to power, that's loads more influence. I'm actually, in fact, I definitely need that right now. Yeah, worth it. We need that for the habitats and for the other galactic wonders. Here, the Holy Empire is about to engage a fleeing fleet. Some might consider this an act of aggression, perhaps even evil, but look how shiny they are. Truly a wonderful performance. That's a lot of missiles. I love the swarm. We need more of those battleships, just because the swarm looks so awesome. But saying that, the Corvettes make their own swarm. Just pause for a second. Yep, Corvettes and these lovely little space amoeba. Down goes you. Next up is this one. Then that one. Then that one. Then that one. Whilst our allies behind us are taking over everything. Before I forget, someone did point out in the previous video that the habitats will have a resource zone if the planet they're orbiting did have resources you could normally put a mining station or a research station on. Because this one could have a research station, we have extra society research, which is always good. Okay, so after that, just the usual. Paradise Dome, Leisure District, and Visitor Center. Now, I'm tempted to get power from this, but if we have enough minerals, we can just make the Dyson Sphere. Just make sure we have enough minerals after doing this to start making the next habitat. I really should start making one of the other wonders soon, but I'm having fun just increasing our population to such a ridiculous level. Now building three habitats at the same time. Number one. Number two. Number three. Ooh, definitely cruiser hull points. One more Gaia world. Oh, darn it. I could have had four habitats at once, but sadly we don't quite have the influence. Complete. We will, though, in five months. And so begins construction of the Resource Replicator. Monthly minerals, plus 40, upkeep, 45 energy. Definitely want the Dyson Sphere soon. Finish one habitat, build another. Because why not? We now even have a Calvin Scientist. Okay, so you should kill this. Uh, who just died? Scientist and scientist, that's fine. I, I need to redo the scientist soon anyway, so... Although it's not a good thing, obviously. It's rather sad. It's not really affecting how we're playing right now. I didn't know this, but apparently the resource replicator is not unique. You can have lots of them. It's not very efficient, energy to mineral, but it is efficient per slot. That's curious. May end up building a lot of those in the future. Okay, our mineral production is now getting really, really high up, and it's still a long way off where it's going to be. 
We are once again the leader of the Federation, and for now I'm going to spam some Corvettes. There you go, loads of Corvettes for the Federation. Enjoy this gift. And I've been a little bit sneaky. For the last few minutes, I've been going after the enemy fleets, not the stations. I've been leaving these two stations operational, so they keep on respawning the fleets, and the fleets keep on attacking us. And I've got our war exhaustion up to 91%. The problem is, I'm now noticing we don't own enough planets. So if we do split them up, we're not actually going to make a very large state. So maybe victory is the best option. I really don't know at this stage. Though, to be fair, if we go over here now to our victory conditions, we now have 49 of 104 planets. We need to get 60%. Of course, every time we build a new, a new habitat, this is increasing the maximum planets, but percentage-wise, it is giving us an advantage. We're not all that far off winning, basically, is what I'm saying. Wow, we have 29, sorry, 26 of 69 planets for the domination victory as well. Oh, we apparently have the plague. That's always good. Who's infected? Who are infected? Shouldn't I have just cured you? Okay, it did. Just you have another modifier on your side there. Um, are you infected? Yes, you are. Are you infected? Yes, you are. Come on, hurry up and do the science. Now speaks to us in the language of the divine. Okay, so we just managed to actually force that type of peace. Wow, the new empire. Oh, of course, because all the systems got transferred. So not many planets, but a lot of systems. I was just about to land here as well and take over that planet. Literally, my forces were here or here. I was hoping to get one more. That's fine. In a second, though. No, let's just talk to the new fellows. Hello, new fellows. Apparently you're instantly being friendly with some of our other members, which is fantastic. Now you're probably quite low down. Is that you? Yes, it is. Why can't I federation you? Because distance. Just that, really? Well, in that case, let's just make you the best friend ever. We are spreading our oh. faith to a new world. Yeah, but the infectious person's still in there. So, yep, they're now part of our federation in terms of being an associate, so at least we have that. So, all we need to do is make them better friends with us, and that will happen over time. They'll gain trust with us now. And then after a while, they will be able to become part of our federation. So we have a brand new member, these guys. Yay, no more infected. Which means we get the Plague Memorial, which is a nice chunk of free unity. Federation Invitation. Oh good, they ended up joining us anyway. Just took a few seconds. There we are, we have one more member now of the Federation. So now we have five, including myself. No, yes, we have five. Also, apparently I managed to swap that. There we go. Five, including oneself. Lovely. So how many worlds did that actually add to Federation Victory? We're not far off. We really aren't. And I'm still going to make more and more of these lovely, wonderful habitats. I was saying that. I still really want a ring world. Am I upgrading my core sectors? Okay, in that case, you know what? Let's make a ring world right here. This. Why not? Actually, yeah, why not? What's needed for a ring world, then? This one can't have a ring world because... Oh, of course, we're, we're still making the um, science nexus and you can't do the main ones more than one at a time. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, I'm going to remove you. And I'm going to put down a new habitat right there. Something occurs to me. I believe you can make as many planets as you wish into holy planets, which will give us plus 10% unity per month. 
If I can keep on doing that, then why don't I go ahead and every habitable planet within our system, which I'm not going to actually colonize, I just turn them all into Gaia worlds and then make each of them holy. So each of these basically represents plus 10% unity. Well, we're going to see if this works. Here's hoping it does, because that will be insane if it does. Once more in the shroud, this time let us try to communicate with it. Form a covenant with the Instrument of Desire. There will be a price to pay- Whoa! Plus 25% energy, plus 25% minerals. What is that negative though? There will be a price to pay. It'll grant us wealth, power, and prestige. All that we have ever desired. All that we will ever desire. The cost? A small matter. Little more than a cover fee. It only wants what's best for us. It will help us, guide us, direct our ambitions and dreams. If we will only accept them into our hearts. Oh. It is done. We have formed a covenant with the Instrument of Desire. Oh my god, it's Lanesh. She who thirsts. Well, uh, apparently we've just made a um, pact with the Prince of Pleasure. The arguably one of the worst Chaos Gods to make a pact with. It did not take long for the effects to be felt. Reports of rich new veins of ore found in our minds. Businesses that were about to fail suddenly booming. Rare and valuable resources found on asteroids that were abundant, so absolutely certain previously held nothing but ice and rock. It seems our empire is entering a golden age of wealth and prosperity, just as the instrument promised us. But, what was this cost it spoke of? <laughs> this could be very bad. Have a new world. This could be very, very bad indeed. Okay, more research. Sorry, more resource silos. Uh, claimed a new world, have we? Yes, we have. Lovely. Hello there, Cash Cacti. I chose you because you are good at generating energy, and I want this to be an energy-related one. Still, though, we're still going to do all the usual Unity bonuses, because Unity is awesome and all that. But then we are going to focus solely on solar power here. Well, except for that one little mineral patch down here, which I will keep as minerals once I have the minerals to make minerals. The Science Nexus is ours! We have now begun a massive undertaking of constructing a Science Nexus. The Foundation is in place and preparations are underway to add the main hub, the promise of new groundbreaking technologies and the realisation of ideas beyond our wildest imaginations await. And though the road ahead is long and full of challenges, we have taken the first step. Could the endless mysteries of the universe finally be within our grasp? That costs a bloody fortune. Okay, uh, you? You know what? Cancel that. I'm gonna cancel that, because I really, really want that to start. Before the end of this video, I want this to at least begin to be constructed. Wow, plus 75 all sciences. Now, what I'm going to definitely need then is this. Plus 50% megastructure. Habitats are still being completed. We have 21, and we are currently about to colonize two more. Science Nexus, begin your upgrading. That's going to take a very, very long time, but we can at least half it by doing this. There we go. Oh, plus 50%. Okay, so not half of it then. <laughs> I need to learn to read. Okay, with that, I'm going to be calling the episode. I'm actually amazed that the Wakened Empire just doesn't seem to be doing anything. They've just sort of been sitting there. Apparently, they do want to eventually make us surrender, but maybe they're just not strong enough. 
They are superior to us with fleet power, but the thing is, if they go to war with us, they go to war with five different empires, each of which has their own fleet. And then we have the Federation fleet between us. I just don't think they're strong enough to fight us right now, which is weird. So I'm just kind of leaving them alone, and if they keep leaving us alone, then that's fine. Our income is ridiculous now, so we can increase our fleet, and we certainly have enough... Um, naval capacity, which also is constantly increasing because of our starbase capacity going up. We're also about to start upgrading our navy capacity after we get this. There's honestly not much they can do against us. Of course, this is not an endgame crisis. Maybe one of those will show up before we win. Who knows? Either way, I really hope you've enjoyed the video. I've had way too much fun and spent over two hours longer than I originally expected recording. So if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Ah, but before we leave, I am going to do... this. Not that. There we are, unions. So now all who are in our federation are that honestly hard to see grey colour. Yeah, maybe if we were a brighter colour that would have more impact. Someone was asking me to do that, so there we are, that's how we are currently. Once again, thank you for watching, and goodbye.